Hey weirdos, this is Evan Charvix with Make Oklahoma Weirder, and this is your local music vlog for the week. Uh, and I'm saying week because I'm mostly going to talk about this week, but I do understand it's been a little bit since I've checked in. Um, hopefully you've missed me. I've definitely missed you. I've missed doing this. It's it's only been a few weeks, but I'm here. I'm doing the thing, and I've got a lot planned with um, the site and everything. Uh, I put out a post earlier uh, this week, I'm going to do, I've got a new logo that I'm going to premiere soon with a slight rebrand and uh, more content. I've got video content from Norman Music Fest that's on the way. And so I haven't been just like twiddling my thumbs. I have been working on some stuff. And uh, I'm also going to have some merch ready soon as well. Um, glow in the dark enamel pins, in fact. So uh, be on the lookout for that announcement. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, Cavern Company, Gotta Talk Cavern Company, um, who put out an EP uh, called So This Is Happiness, uh, which has been, you know, a couple of years in the making, more or less. Um, this is a band that, you know, really splashed on my radar whenever they were uh, really pushing and promoting their debut EP, uh, which I believe was called Tension or Tensions. And uh, that album definitely had a lot of similar sounds to what they're working with now, but the tone was a lot different. They were definitely working through some things. The song writing was a little bit more, uh, it was dealing with stuff, you know. And um, I feel like the new stuff that they've been putting out since they worked through all that uh, has been a lot brighter, been a lot happier, been a lot catchier. And I think a lot of other people have taken notice as well. Uh, the new album, So This Is Happiness, I mean, it's it's just like the title. Like, it really does feel great. It's buoyant. It's It's just really sunny feel good music and uh if you've been following the singles uh which they dropped a number of singles last year one of which was my number one single of the year by the way um they i mean they're working with a sound that i think a lot of bands are working with it's it's uh, something that I think a lot of indie rock music is pushing towards right now but few if any bands are at least around here are are pushing it with such uh, precision and such thought and care and just hard work. I mean, these guys put a lot of work into not just the music, but in the promotion and the business side of being an independent artist. I mean, it's, it's not an accident that they have gained quite a lot of popularity and quite a lot of fans and have ended up on like all these Spotify playlists over the past couple of years. I mean, they've been working. So it's really nice to see this EP out, um, which is, like I said, solid. It's uh, They've got three of those singles from last year are on here. I guess they're remastered. Um, I don't really hear a difference, but I'm not really that kind of listener either. I wouldn't really call myself an audiophile to know the difference between two differently mastered songs unless they were just incredibly different. Um, but there's two new songs in there too, which kind of add a nice tonal variety in the mix. So uh, shout out to Cavern Company. Good album. Uh, glad you guys are, are doing the thing, man. Um, speaking of Cavern Company, um, I believe... They're playing tonight at uh, the Wheeler District uh, event. Uh, Wheeler District, if you don't know, last year they started putting on these uh, summertime monthly events. Once a month they would have live music with uh, food trucks and, you know, the whole the whole thing. Vendors, games, all that stuff. Very family-friendly, very community-focused events. And uh, I remember being struck by how inclusive it felt um, while still being kind of family-friendly and commercial. Like, they, they really made a point to uh, pick a lot of artists that come from a lot of different places instead of kind of picking, you know, the same genres or the same one or two genres over and over. I felt like there was a lot of representation in variety of music last year, which I really appreciated and which I see continuing this year as well. Uh, looking at the roster they have lined up for uh, the next few months. But the first of those Wheeler District events is happening tonight. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, Cavern Company is playing that tonight um, alongside Casey Clifford, uh, who's a folk singer-songwriter who's been around for quite some time. Uh, lately, definitely been a Blue Note fixture. Uh, she put out a Blue Note live album that was kind of a listening room singer-songwriter slash storytelling sort of album where she would sort of talk about the music between songs and <coughs> it was a really cool album 
And I know she's working on some new studio stuff right now, too. Uh, so if you just like your folk writing to be just really, I don't know, just really... Because I wouldn't say that her stuff is necessarily always happy, but I always feel really warm whenever I hear her music, uh, even if she's dealing with stuff that's, you know, heavy. Like, she writes in such a way and she plays in such a way that's just very welcoming and wholesome and just warm. So uh, catch Casey Clifford also tonight on that lineup, uh, alongside a third artist that I don't really know who I had to kind of look up. Um, who I gather is kind of new. I listened to a single she has out, which is, like, really good. Um, it's not necessarily my thing, but it's uh, it's it's piano-based. It's like a piano singer-songwriter thing, but, like, a lot of it's spoken word, which I'm super into, um, and it appears to grapple with, like, some pretty heady um, issues uh, relating to spirituality in particular. Um, which is possibly why I'm not familiar with this artist. She may come from uh, the church more so. Um, but uh, anyway, I think I think it's going to be a, a really nice night. Um, but uh, I, I, I forget the name of that third artist, and I'm not going to try to butcher it and try to remember it. So uh, moving on, uh, I don't have enough time to get to everything, but I'd really like to. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Rainbows Are Free. Um, which is uh, a long-time metal band from around here. Uh, definitely if you're into uh, your metal that's a little bit more long-winded, uh, kind of your, your sludge and doom styles of metal, Rainbows Are Free is, is like, you know, the band. And they've kind of been in and out for the past couple of years. I know they've had uh, one or two shows, like, at the Tower and at Norman Music Fest, and they've always been, like, big shows. Um, and they played South by Southwest as well, and I know that they've got a record, it's ready to go, and they're currently seeking a label um, to properly uh, distribute it, and I know they were actively seeking, uh, seeking professionals out at South by Southwest, and apparently they still are, because there was a, an article that came out that premiered a new track from Rainbows Are Free, and it is... It is awesome. <laughs> it's almost seven minutes, and yet whenever it ends, it's like, oh, that's it? I want it to keep going. Like, that's how you know you've got some good doom metal on your hands. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, uh, I forget the name of the website, but they did a whole write-up on this song and on the band and on the, uh, the album forthcoming. Um, but, uh, yeah, Rainbows Are Free apparently coming back. Uh, in full force, which I'm really excited about because they're awesome. Uh, and they're playing at the Deli, I think, tomorrow night, Saturday, uh, which is really crazy because uh, Rainbows are free at the Deli. Like, that's quite a show. And um, they are being joined by The Lost End, which is a bit more of a post-punk thing. Um, but The Lost End uh, dropped two albums last year and have definitely been been hustling and making efforts to play all sorts of venues, um, playing outside their comfort zones, playing with other artists, and I have a lot of respect for those guys. So The Lost In, Rainbows Are Free at the Deli, and new album coming out soon. Really excited about that. Um, I want to talk about Mayfest a little bit. Um, not the Norman Mayfest. There's a Tulsa Mayfest that I've never been to, um, but it strikes me as kind of like a Festival of the Arts equivalent. Uh, where there is a music element, but it's not like the element. Uh, a lot of people are probably just there for the food. Uh, there's some people who are there for the art, you know. And the music is all going to be pretty singer songwritery pretty, uh, you know, family-friendly, very safe. Um, but I want to shout out uh, Tulsa Little Jam. Tulsa Little Jam is kicking off their Season 2 at Mayfest this year. and That's really awesome. Uh... I don't have time to go into it, but do me a favor and check out Tulsa Little Jam. I want something like this in Oklahoma City. The closest thing we have is the uh, the Play It Loud series, but uh, Play It Loud is kind of a different take on it. It's a bit more of a documentarian thing. Um, this is more of a uh, very... I think they describe it as like Austin City Limits meets uh, NPR Tiny Desk. Uh, concerts, which is actually a really good way of describing it. So, um, it's it's a concert series um, that 
they had 15 episodes last year, you know, just really great taste in up and coming artists and uh, shout out to them in season two. I have 10 seconds left. Chris, the God MC, uh, dropped a new album recently as well. It's awesome. And I got to talk about it soon with more time.